Welcome back, everyone, to Aether Eternius, Dark Side of the Foundry. Last time, we did have some technical issues. Tends to happen. But uh, the group started off with finally getting a chance to meet their recently reincarnated friend, Flix, who was now known as Luminosa, who had become a positive primordial. They took some time to ask questions, kind of get to know her better uh, in this new life, as well as kind of just laying low inside of what is essentially the like a uh, temporary base for Astro and co eventually they all sort of settle down for the rest of the night and each and every one of them had their own so let's say nightmarish encounters perhaps but would eventually all wake to the next morning rather bright and early to find that, for the most part, they're left alone with only a few pauses mulling about. More importantly, as the group began to reconvene and wake up due to the fact that Rose decided to slam shutters a few times, sending Luminosa into a panicked frenzy, thinking that there was ghosts haunting the room itself. Most of the party members, however, in this chaos did not notice that one of their own has slipped away. And although I would love to focus on the chaos that is currently happening in the Plane of Fire, I'm afraid that we will be turning the camera to the wayward party member who has not just left the Plane of Fire, but is en route to the Plane of Null. Varius was able to sneak past the guards keeping the Null Gate locked down using a Nat 100 magic, wild magic roll to cast invisibility. <laughs> Followed by a nat 20 will save against the fear that was slowly starting to flood them. However, it was short-lived as they soon came across a large gap in the road ahead of them just before the portal that led into Null. For a short time, it seemed as if they were alone. But... The longer they stayed there, they soon realized they were not. And I'll be taking you to a brand new map. Oh, I'm sure this is fine. Various. currently the only sounds that you are hearing are the howling winds, the crackling lightning, and the soft rumble of debris far down below you. But you have an overwhelming feeling that you are no longer alone in this place. I would like you to give me a perception check, please. Okay. Opening up the sheet. I'm sorry. You strain your eyes. You look around. You try to discover whatever this presence is. Is it a guard? Is it another primordial? Is it something else? But... You can't see anything. However, you do hear something. You hear the sound of wind blowing through robes. More importantly, you hear them coming from behind you, blocking your escape to the rest of the foundry. Oh, this is great. And as you turn around, there is a figure in white and blue robes. But this is not just any figure. Oh, this is great, guys. You recognize this figure. You can see her uh, piebald ears from outside of her hood. She has a short stature similar to yours, but she seems to be blocking your path. Do you wish to say anything? He's just going to stand there in shock and trying to stay quiet in case his invisibility spell is still in effect. And as, there's, as you stand there in silence for several moments, you see her finally open her mouth. I can see you. You can drop it now. So, just here to try and kill me again. Mostly. You 
I'm actually quite surprised that you were foolish enough to leave behind that ragtag group of yours. I would have thought with the intelligence that allowed you to go to that prestigious school, you would at least have half the brain cell to know not to wander into a derelict place alone. But it seems I'm mistaken. <sighs> well, I would have thought you had the morals not to commit genocide or, you know, enact horrible experiments on innocent people, but Apparently, I was wrong about that, too. You were also wrong about the fact that everyone else back home is still well and good. Hmm? Do you want to know why I'm doing this, Various? Because of you. Is that so? Yeah. Because this was the only way I could protect mother and father. Wasn't given much of a choice. Die or run. Honestly, you should have chose the first one. Because at this point, you're going to be doing that anyway. And I'm going to make sure that you don't leave this place. I'm going to avenge father with your blood. And you see her actually take out a staff that seems to be made almost prominently of ice and with like flowers that seem to be frozen along the uh, the actual top of it. And she'll slam the end of it into the ground. She wants him dead. She blames uh, him for her father. father. So uh, he's going to summon Eidolon at this mm. point. Oh, yay! And with that, I will need you to roll initiative. Also, here's some music for all of you. I don't know if, if people on stream are going to be able to hear it. This is Sarah's battle song. Okay, I need to select her token. I do have a sheet for her. Can I actually roll the sheet? In my defense, I did roll a wisdom save to see if he'd be stupid. He failed very badly. Music is live. Oh boy. Various. Your sister's out to kill you. Let's see if you have the will to, to do, do her one better. On her turn, since she rolled the highest initiative, she immediately was slammed down her staff. And right before her, you begin to see several bolts of magic begin to form in front of her. More importantly, you realize that she's not struggling to cast these spells. The wild magic is not affecting her, similar to how Enel was in the Plane of Wind. She casts Magic Missile at you at the basic level, so you're going to get hit three times. Five, two, and two. As you see, bolts of magic fly out from in front of her and into your chest. So that's nine. Mm -hmm. Not only that, but she's not moving from her spot. Alright. Oh. Is it my turn? Yes, it is. She's not moving. Okay, he's going to summon Eidolon. Okay. So go ahead and get Valua on the board for you. Where do you want to summon him? You can move around. Uh, right, uh, right here, and he's large size. Okay, so let's make this boy chunky. There you go. Okay, and I'm guessing I have to roll initiative for him. Ah, uh, he goes on your turn. Okay. Um. So. So. 
so Bellow is going to charge forward. Okay. And is going to do what he does best. Big ol' smash. <laughs> oh lordy coming. That will hit. That's a good chunky hit. 16 and then 15 does not hit. Alright. Alright, so I'm gonna take that off from her health. Didn't want to display for some reason. There we go. Let's get my calculator! Alrighty. So that. That was a good solid hit on her. Uh, she does recoil a little bit from the hit. But she quickly straightens back up. Eight. Mm -hmm. And is that all I get to do, or...? Uh, let me double check the summoner rules real quick. Because you're level 8, I believe, right now? Uh, yes. Alright, let me double check class features. Uh, yes, you still get your turn. He just acts on your turn. Um. And with that, he's going to, um use um, magic missile as well. Mm -hmm. And now do I need to roll something for that? You do need to roll wow magic. Unlike your sister. Alright. That's a success. Go ahead. Okay, so this would be at. Shoot. Sorry, I was not expecting immediate right. combat. Uh, sorry. That's okay. Um, base magic missile hits for three and then it's one for every level above it yeah so he's going to cast it at that fourth level okay so cast it three times and then at the, the last one that first one will count as the one One more. So six, seven, eight, nine. Not bad. That's 14 damage. That's not bad. Okay. And that's going to be his turn. Okay, so go ahead and like that. And now it's your sister's turn. She seems to be hurt to some degree. But, uh, she's still very much standing strong. You always knew her as a bit of the warrior type. So the fact that she's still standing shouldn't be any surprise to you. However, you begin to see her channel something from the staff and into her body as she uses Quicken Spell, a sorcerer meta magic. I would like you to roll Arcana as she does this, please. No, I'm sure it's fine. Probably some guild hoodoo that you don't know about. I don't. Okay. And as she does this, Quicken Spell allows her to cast one normal spell in a cantrip in the same turn. And what she's going to do is you see what looks to be fire energy leaving her body as she begins to channel this magic. And you begin to feel the air around you growing hotter and hotter as she casts Fireball centered on you. 
I need to I'm make just... me a dex save. As well as Bellua. Okay. Bellua. This is Bellua save. Bellua does not save. Uh -huh. Bellua does not save. Uh, and you meet it, so you're gonna take half damage, but you begin to see as she channels this fiery magic. You were initially look around to see where the heat's coming from, but then you look above you as you see this massive ball of fire forming above you before it crashes down into you. You're able to at least mostly dodge most of the magic, only taking how much is about 15 points of damage. While Belua, focused on Hasura, takes the full blunt of it. His entire backside seared by the raging flames. So, how he much takes, is... He takes 31. Okay. So... Okay, and Various takes how much? He takes 15. Okay. She's not done, however. As she begins to channel even more energy from the staff into her body, she will utilize another meta magic, twinning spelled, meaning she can essentially double cast a spell, but currently the only one she's able to cast is a cantrip. So she casts Firebolt. First, on you. As you see a bolt of fire fly past Belua, aim directly at you. Does a 23 hit? Uh, at me? Yes. Yes, that does hit. You take 10 points of fire damage. And the next one, she will fire directly, point blank, at Bellua. Does a 19 hit. Just barely. He takes 14 points of damage. As you get singed by fire, various, you begin to remember something. Your sister never knew these sorts of things. She was never a spellcaster. Yeah. Something doesn't seem right here. That's the end of her turn. Alrighty. Sorry, I'm doing the math. Of course. Various is in bad shape. <laughs> so, all right. Um, Belly was going to go. Um. It's going to go ahead and do continue to be basically clawing as usual. Okay. Uh, that does not hit. Yep, and I don't think they get the second one if they don't hit with the first one. Mm -hmm. Except so, those are traits, right? Uh, yeah. I think so. Mm -hmm. So, uh, he's going to take aim with, um, with a spell, despite the risk. Mm hmm So, go ahead and roll wild magic first. Yep. You're good? So he's going to be firing off a lightning bolt. All right. No, he'll need to move first. So. Okay. I think that's a good angle. And Just checking something. Okay. All right. And she needs to roll a dex save. Good hit. She succeeds! <laughs> oh boy. So she's gonna take 15 points of that incoming damage. And but she still does get hit. You see electricity course through your sister's veins. 
She's still standing strong, however. Um... He knows at this point that it's kill or be killed. Mm -hmm. Or... There's one last thing. Uh... Because he's in very bad shape. He is suddenly very close to death. Um... Mm -hmm. What would it take to... Uh... Okay, he's going to... Does he have any more actions for the turn? He might have a little bit of movement, but other than bonus actions, probably not. Uh -huh. So he's probably going to have to move back with his remaining movement. And behind you is a giant ravine that seems to go on forever. Occasionally, bolts of bright blue magic shoot out from the depths, reaching into the sky like tendrils in the dark night that around you. Yep, he did. He did a dumb. He did a big stupid. So, uh, I think that's my turn, unless Bellua can move to block her, her line of sight. Uh, I believe he still has some movement on his turn because he didn't use charge, correct? Right, he was just standing. Yeah, he was just standing there. Okay. Alright. By this time, the group has noticed Various is gone. I would like each and every one of you that are currently not in combat to please roll me a 1d20. Hey, what was that? I would like everyone that is currently not in combat, so yeah, Tiberius, Rose, Frias, and Luminosa to please roll 1d20. Okay. This is the order that you guys are going to arrive in! Because you have noticed that Varys has gone missing, and we'll say that Freyus had the intel intellect to utilize a scrying spell to track where Varys is gone. Freyus is currently in the lead. They were the one that noticed first. They will arrive now. Freyus! Since you knew about, since you were able to pinpoint Various' direct location, you got a head start and therefore you've arrived on the scene. You see Various is barely clinging to life at the moment. Belua seems to be holding back a figure that is in white and blue robes. Let me get you on the board. You'll be behind. Right here. I need you to roll me initiative, Frias. You'll be getting a surprise round. You are muted as, by the way. Sorry, I was checking something real quick, and for some reason I cannot click my token. Oh, that's why. There I, know. <laughs> I, I had a plan. Okay. Now, you have a surprise round since you came in behind everyone. So you're free to take an action. Oh, just an action? Action and movement. So same as a normal surprise round. No bonus action. If you have it. Do I have to choose between action and bonus action? No, you shouldn't have to. Oh, I can do both still, like it's a normal move? It is a surprise round, yeah. Oh, uh, okay. It's surprise round's basically just an extra round. You just get to go before everyone else. Okay, so, uh... As you can tell by the measurement, I have 60 feet, and Healing Spirit is literally going to be casted on, uh... Oh, I gotta do magic first. Yep, you gotta do a lot of magic first. Okay. Yeah, you're good? Yep. Right on yeah, top of Arius. Arius, you're almost trying to see through the pain at this point, but then you see a very familiar little tiny spirit kind of appear above you and then land before you. That's Freyus' little healing spirit. You've seen it several times before. Yeah. And then you look up past Belua, past your sister, and you see Freyus is standing there. Looking a little flustered from having to run so quickly, but they're there. You're not alone. No, it's only 1d6. I'm in such big trouble. 
<laughs> there, start off with that. Yay! I'm gonna get you a token for your little healing spirit real quick. Where did I put it? Where did I put it? There you are. Put you on there. Put you right there. Not. Let me give you control as. Win. There you go. You have control of it. Yay. Alright. Is healing spirit all you're gonna do, or are you going to do anything else uh, during your round? Move up. I'm just looking at my spells, trying to think out what I'm doing, because it's like, oh, hey, if you're this level, and it's like, mm, I, I'm not ready for this. No, I won't cast a spell. So, uh, I'm just gonna go bonk. You gonna bonk? Yeah, I'm gonna bonk. That hits! Damn, okay. Four Ooh, damage. I, I good on damage. And that definitely got her attention. As, uh, it is now top of the round. Sarah immediately turns to see that you're standing there, Freya, as before. She looks back to Belua and tries to almost look through him toward you, Various. It's like, so you really can't fight alone without them. Pathetic. And she begins to channel once more into the staff of hers. But it changes into fire once again. Right above her, a cloud of fire begins to form above her as she casts. Fire now, if, she, if she's casting with two people beside her, does that they trigger can. attack? They, they att trigger attacks of opportunities, yes. Belua looks up, sees the brewing firestorm, so does Frias. They know that's a big trouble. Well, my spell, well, my spell is unfortunately for when the spell is already cast, so just gonna have to bonk again. Mm -hmm. You can take a free bonk. Free bonk. <laughs> that hits? Ooh, that hits. Better. Wow, good damage. Super bonk. She's looking slightly bloodied at this point, but she still manages to get the cast off regardless. So I need Belua and Freyas to both make me deck saves. As you see, just this fire begin to rain down on you like a hailstorm. Oh, this is gonna be fine. This is gonna be fine. <laughs> Yeah, you both take 42 points of fire damage. I'm unconscious already. <laughs> you see various as these big, like, almost brimstone uh, hail-sized bolts of fire begin to rain down, and one of them immediately clocks Freyus over the head, and she falls to the ground. Several of them bar barrage Belua. Yeah, that's gonna hurt me too well. <laughs> Uh, let me check the range of it. I believe it's only 10, uh, 10 feet around her. Yeah, yeah but remember the thing? Oh, yeah! Uh, that's right. Various says the value was fur and flesh are singed. You feel the exact same pain. Oh, no. Oh, yay! <laughs> oh, wow, that is tiny. That is not going to work out. So I'm going to go ahead and Freyus, you are unconscious. So let me mark you with this. It's kind of tiny. Yeah. Uh, That's the end of her turn. Various, you're up. <sighs> oh, wait. Wait, what? What? Uh, what, what? Hold on. I think I have resistance, because, yeah, hellish resistance. Oh, yeah, you have resistance to fire damage. You, that. You, have to, you take half of it, then. Okay, so... Yeah, have fire have... resistance. I forgot about so that. So 21. Uh... So 21, yeah. Okay, I am still fine. I completely oh, forgot I you just have fire run... resistance. <laughs> I forgot. I was a tiefling for half a second. <laughs> All right, so... She's looking a little bloodied, but she's still standing strong. 
All right, so. Um, Darius is going to go ahead and let me go ahead and just roll. Forty-two. Okay, you're good. Okay, so he's going to go ahead and and fire off magic missile because he's got something very big in his line of sight. Yeah, he needs to be able to hit no matter what. Okay, five. Okay, that's good. So that's so it, he's casting it at normal. So three, three of them. Yes. Yeah. Oops, that's not what I meant to. Okay. <laughs> Um, eight, and then twelve. Good hit, solid hit. And he's going to. He doesn't want to leave behind this healing spirit because he really needs the healing spirit. Mm -hmm. um, so, Bella was gonna reel back with their claws. And would they get? I don't know if we're doing advantage rules for flanking. Uh, since these are my house rules, yes, flanking applies. Okay, so... Because I find it really stupid that that's... Oh, thank baby. goodness! <laughs> oh, yeah, mm, yeah, the 17 will hit. <laughs> okay, and then... Good. Go oh, back. uh, one thing real quick. Uh, because you're starting your turn in there, you get a d6 of healing. Yay! Mm -hmm. So make sure so. you do a d6. Okay, well, then. <laughs> oh, oh. Okay. <laughs> Any healings? Good healing. <laughs> yeah, Annie is good, especially with her. And bonus claw. Aha! That hits. It's and fine. because they hit with both, because they have Rind. Yeah. Rip and tear. That hits. And um. Yep. That's 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 our t turn. Mm-hmm. He's just sort of. He just. He's. Not having a great morning. She's definitely looking a little bit more haggard now after that thrashing. Is that your turn? Yep. Freyus, you. Can you r roll me an Arcana check, please? Indeed, I can. Yes. You recognize that spell. That was Firestorm. Only very high-level sorcerers or wizards know that spell. Which means that you're potentially dealing with an incredibly high-level wizard or sorcerer right now. You know that you escaped some serious damage with that. Yay. <laughs> but, uh, due to your passive perception, actually... You finally get a chance to get a good look at this figure. You recognize this figure! This is Varius' sister! Ten out of ten. Mm-hmm. What do you want to do on your turn? Well, since I have my bonus action back, uh... Weld shape into a wolf. Because bork. Bellew is blocking the path. Bork, bork, bork. Visual. Yep, borking. All right. Time to go bork! <laughs> and then... Uh... Oh, oh, there it is. And... Nom. Uh, that oh. will hit! That shouldn't have been auto-rolled, but... It hits, still. Let's go get this ready. Nope, didn't want that. Okay, so that is... Okay. Uh, let me look up something quick. I can't remember if there's, like, something special. Uh, Firewolf Bite, I believe it was one... Uh, Peck Tactics. Oh, pack tactics, that's right. Advantage on attack rolls. And I believe they have to be within five feet of you. Um, has advantage on attack roll against a creature if at least one of the wolf's allies is within five feet of the of the creature and the ally. Isn't there you go. So, so do I roll is again? Out something yeah, I see that. I was getting her sheet up. So roll again, just in case. Oh no, I need some. I need her to roll. Oh. She fails. She is knocked prone. Nice. And it yeah, may I be the end. Any... It's hard what? to say. 
Is that it? You're... No, I think that's all I can do. Fine. So, yeah. Orc. Top, top of the round. Rose, you finally make it onto the scene. Let me put you on the board. I need you to roll me initiative. And you'll be also taking the same thing as Freya's with the surprise round. There we go. Okay, so the surprise round starts now. Mm-hmm. And you see Freyus. More importantly, you see Belua. You see Varys off in the distance. But you see guild mage robes. I do see that. Mm-hmm. Um, check my distance here. If I can remember how to do this in row 20. Oh, Never mind, we'll figure it out later. Um, You're getting used to Foundry too, aren't you? <laughs> maybe. <laughs> um, yeah, let me check some of me real quick here. You're 15 feet away from her. Yes, well, let's see here. Yeah, ain't that be the case. All right. Uh, Rose is going to see this. Uh, these Rose immediately will hold out their hand. Uh, is going to attempt to cast Hold Person. All right, go ahead. Ah, uh, that's a success. You were able to cast it. Alright, so that is a wisdom saving throw. Alright. And what is your DC? 14? Four, 14. She fails. So she is not only prone, but she is currently paralyzed. And upon doing so... We'll look over behind them and see a rather haggard looking various at the moment. And something to the effect of shock appears in their face, and they just start. Come on. No, work with me here. <laughs> wow. oh, Rose no. just nopes out, like, oh, <laughs> bye. <laughs> Oh my for, some, God. for some reason, row 20 wants to scroll whenever I try to drag my token. That's weird. Oh. Uh, did you try right-clicking? Because uh, right-click is drag screen. Mm, shouldn't be. And, and you have to do it on the map, because if you do it anywhere else, it permanently locks to scrolling. Okay, okay, we're cool, we're cool. D5, 10, D20, 25... But yeah, just... Rose will just use all of their movement to start making a run towards Varius. Alright. And now we're at the top of the round once again. Sarah has to make a wisdom saving throw on her turn to try to break free of your whole person. She fails. She cannot move. Varius, Rose has arrived. He just... He looks shaken and looks like there's a few burns, but he's definitely holding himself as if he's a lot more hurt than he looks. And oh yes, yay! <laughs> All the baby heels. And. He looks obviously um, pained. And th there's just a mixture of emotions on his face. And. Uh, 
finally he's going to look at um at Bellowa and Bellowa's going to make is going to keep attacking. Alright. No. That fails. Well, is it is it with advantage or still because they're flanking and she's prone? Or Yes, still with advantage to go again. That hits. That hits. Good hit. Rip and tear. Good hits. Good hits. She is definitely starting to look really bad. And Various isn't going to cast a spell this turn and is just not it's clear that he's very conflicted. Oh. And that's going to be my turn. Alright. Freyas. She's down on one knee. She is panting. She's bloodied. About how close to death are they? You can't tell. Considering the fact that most of her body's covered in robes. She looks like she's in a lot of pain, but you can't tell if she's about to die or not. Well, they're her whole person in prone, so Freyas mm -hmm. will hold her attack until they break whole person. Mm-hmm. Okay. <laughs> no, if you're holding your action, <laughs> you can only Oh, oh, oh uh, right, move. I can't do anything. Right. Yeah, you can't do anything if you're holding your action. Tempted Gross. to sit. Mm-hmm. But no, it's just going to be hold action to attack if they break out a whole person. Because okay. Gross, you're kind of in person. Mm-hmm. All right. Uh, from the monologue. Yeah, I mean, that's fair. Oh, what, what, what does Rose want to do here? Yeah, you know what? I'm going to uh, try to at least bonus action cast Spiritual Weapon. Alright, let me find the token for that little thing. It's around here somewhere. There it is. Where do you want to place it? Okay. Yes? What's up? Sorry about that. Mm -hmm. All right, you can go ahead and move your switch weapon. I believe you have a uh, full control. Let's see here. I was not expecting combat. <laughs> I wasn't either. Oh, you always expect combat. <laughs> Always already. I'm gonna plan to. Glad Bellula came up because it's like, oh, now you can't see the bark. <laughs> gonna plant it and make it. We'll take a swipe at her. Um, it is with advantage, you said, right? Yes. All right. So she is prone currently. Oh. That hit. Oh. That's a good hit. Good hit, alright. And then... And then, uh, are we following the rule where if... Uh, me, correct me on this, but if you use a bonus... If you use a bonus action to cast a spell, are you still allowed to cast a cantrip as your main action? Yes. All right. As long as it's a cantrip, it can't be a normal spell. Mm -hmm. 
Uh, Rose is going to then attempt Sacred Flame. And let's make sure that goes off. Oh! No! Uh, go ahead and roll me a wild magic. Oh, uh, what's that, 1d100? 1d100. Forty-five. What the hell is this one? Okay. Gotta check what this one does. It's the first time you've gotten this one. Oh boy. Oh. So uh, let's see. How many people are in ten feet of? Oh, okay. Rose, as you begin to cast Spiritual Flame, you notice that the energy itself is not coated with fiery light. Instead, it begins to turn to a dark, almost crackling purple energy as you cast Arms of Hadar instead. You invoke the power of Hadar, the dark hunger. Tendrils of dark energy erupt from you and batter all creatures within 10 feet of you. Each creature in that area must make a strength saving throw. On a failed save, target takes 2d6 necrotic damage and can't take reactions until its next turn. Oh. So, uh, Belua, make a strength saving throw. It's against Rose's spell DC. Uh, yeah, my DC's 14. Okay, go ahead and roll 2d6, please, because he's only going to take half damage but suffers no effect. You end up killing Eight damage. Uh, <laughs> Bellua, you take eight necrotic damage. Oh, no. It feels as if your blood is boiling, Various. Okay. Okay. Yeah, that's <laughs> okay. It's okay. <laughs> Honestly, he deserves this for being stupid. Yeah. <laughs> uh, does Rose see Various react to the spell? Roll me perception, please. I say yes, you can see various recoil after it hits uh, Belua. We're just like, shit, shit, shit. And is going to keep moving towards various. Okay. Oh, hey, you get some heals now, too. Not like you need it. <laughs> Is that your turn? Um, Rose will run to various and be like, "Let's I'll chastise you later." Can you can you still stand? Barely. Good enough. And now yeah, that'll be a turn. Top of the round, the final two party members finally arrived. Luminosa, you arrived before Tiberius. Actually, in fact, you're dragging Tiberius. <laughs> go right. ahead, go ahead, and both of you roll me initiative and take your surprise turn. Luminosa, it'll be determined by who has the higher initiative. Twenty. God damn. <laughs> okay. Luminosa. She's ready to fight. Yeah, Luminosa's ready to fight. You forgot go to click ahead. your token. That's go fine. I can add turn. Token. Oh shit, I got I got it. Don't worry. 2015. Then Tiberius. But yes, go ahead and take your surprise round. Tiberius at turn. 15. Pokey, let me woke up from the forge and chose violence. Yeah. So yeah, uh let me also you do recognize this figure. You remember this figure quite well, I wouldn't say fondly, considering the fact that this was Various' sister, and she's not a good person. And yeah. it's obvious that she seems to be out to hurt Various. Yeah. Kind of don't like her very much. Mm-hmm. What would you like to do for your bonus, for your surprise round? Um, I am going to beat her into a blade pulp. Okay. Show me them rolls. I am going to uh, bonus action uh, prepare or well, bonus action my divine smite. All right. 
And then I'm going to hit her a couple times. All right, let's see it. And then I'm going to hit her a couple of times. That does not hit. Well, she's also... That, that will, attack. yeah, that's right, because she's prone, so make sure you roll twice. 19 will hit. Oh, I also have two attacks. Yeah. yeah, you have a lot of attacks, but 19 will hit. Yep, just with a long sword. Ooh, good damage. Okay. Then second attack. Here comes the next one. I don't forget your smite if you want to activate it, because you turn it Yeah. Down, which you have to okay. roll the damage out. Um... Click on the smite thing. The little word bubble. What? Speech roll. Click. Ooh. Okay. Next 2D damage for the first. Now you do have to expend spell slots to use these. Yeah. So. All right. Which one do you want to expend for that extra damage? Um. I think the is the raffle smite another type of smite, or is it still part it's of the divine smite? It's a different smite. Okay, then never mind. Mm -hmm. Here's that one. That's a different one. Um. Oh yeah, that's a that's an at will. <laughs> first, first level is uh, will do two d eight damage. Second level will be three d eight. Fourth level will be forty eight. You will have up to I think level two. I have two. I have two levels. Yeah. Um, I am going to. I'm gonna drop a second level. Okay, so you got. Two oh, items. okay. Roll the damage. Three d eight. Three d eight. Wait, third level? No, second level, yeah. It's second yeah, level. Three. I only have up to second level. Yeah. That's a problem. You can definitely tell that it seems like she's barely hanging on. Oh, I'm not done yet. I get to hit her again. I know. <laughs> Go for it. Hit her. Uh, it's just... Okay. I believe you yeah. have one more attack. Yes. You that will hit. How would you like to do this? How I'm gonna, I'm gonna like... totally look at her and told her she chose poorly and just end her. How would you like to do, like end her? Would you like to just stab her? Do you want to cut her head off? Oh, I'm, exactly. I'm, I'm, I'm gonna lop her head off. All right, Luminosa, with your final third swing, you just go completely wide and just cut straight through the scarf around her neck. And for a few seconds, it feels like nothing happens. Time slows to a crawl as the body collapses. The head rolls oh, to the ground. Lucky that she's not going to attack because I also have Slasher as one of my feats. Mm-hmm. Various, in fact, you see the head roll. Tiberius, uh, you see a very familiar head roll. Ah. Oh. Hmm. You can go ahead and stop the music. Combat's over. Uh, hold on. Ooh, did she count as an outsider? All right, I'll allow you some time to roleplay. I gotta go feed the cats real quick, but uh, yeah, Cassara is dead. Because if she gets an outsider, I deal an extra two damage on each of those hits. Was there any name? Oh yeah. I don't think it matters at this point. Hespera. Yeah. Hespera. Sorry. Hespera is a. Hespera. Right. <laughs> yeah, sorry, Hespera, but she's oh, not dead. Doesn't matter. Now she's dead. She's very dead. I know. I'm yeah. gonna feed the cats real quick. Yeah. Um. I'm gonna go to various and make sure he's okay. Not dead, Spera. Uh, I'm gonna wait on healing to see what the judgment is. Oh, okay. I can lay on hands him and pop him back up. Well, also the healing spirit, so maybe Tiberius they'll is going do to just simply stand beside Various, waiting. Various oh. is very clearly in shock and finally just looks away. Various. I know I did something stupid. Very stupid. You almost got yourself killed. Uh. 
Uh-huh. I, th- I know a lot's just happened, but I think you all saw an explanation. I... I had a dream, and it's, um... And I... And I thought someone was calling me, and I was stupid, and... But that there was limited time, and maybe it was just a trap, and I'm not feeling okay right now. Um, let's... Well... Yeah, please continue. Identifying how stupid you were. Tiberius? No, no, no. I, I think it's quite uh, obvious that if had we not arrived, we'd have one less Gardanian in our ranks. After Tiberius, kids, Remington, have... Veramont, that's enough. Don't use my name. Only I may. <clears throat> Let's just... Let's just get us all out of here before we get nuked by lightning or something and just get somewhere safer. Yes, when Pete does something, it's perfectly fine when I do the slightest thing. People bite me or claw me in the face. Very well, let's move. (laughs) Did you see anything when she... Her head came off. But was there anything written? Didn't hear you, Jen. What was that? But was there anything else? What else? I'm back. I'm back. I'm really sorry about that. I had to feed the cats. Quick question. Yes. Can I just roll uh, eight d sixes for healing for various? Uh, yeah, so long as the healing spirit lasts. Uh, yeah, it has eight more rounds. Okay, cool. So I'll just roll five and three. Alright. There you go. Rose is... Tiberius and Az, since you are close to the body, can you please roll my perception rolls? And also, Freys would turn back to normal. Mm-hmm. In perception? Yeah, both of you, uh, Tibbs and uh, Freyus. I don't see anything. Neither of you see anything. Okay, never mind. That's fine. Holy crap. I mean, Tiberius doesn't really care, so... (laughs) It's in character. Accurate. Uh, After the uh, previous conversation, Rose is going to also head towards uh, Hesper's body. Give me a perception roll, please, Rose. Okay. You only need a 10. <laughs> but, uh, Rose, as you're looking down on the body, you see the head a few, uh, inches away, right about here. You recognize something out of the ordinary. You remember with Flix's body, when he fell, his soul began to hover above his body. There's nothing here. No soul. Nothing. Is she a ginger? God damn it. Wow! <laughs> oh, <my> question. <laughs> no. So, so here's the question. Is it like with the um, homunculi we ran into before? No, her body has not dissipated or anything. It's still very much bleeding out, actually. She is currently laying in a pool of blood. But there's no soul. Uh, 
Ah, oh, soulless wretch. Rose is going to look towards where the Hespera's head rolled to. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's just laying on the ground. One of the ears flopped to the side. The other one over the eyes. And is going to wander over. Okay. Gingerly pick up the head. Okay. And then looks over. Is going to swirl around, look around to Tiberius, Prius, and Belua. Okay. All of you, stand away. I don't know how this is going to turn out. Oh. And is going to wander back towards the body. Okay. Oh. Please don't destroy the body. And she'll take a step, two steps back, or multiple steps back. <laughs> Belua, are you going to take steps back? Jim? Uh, oh, yes. Sorry. Yeah, <laughs> you're okay. All right, Rose. What are you going to do? Rose is going to try to... Is the body laying flat on the ground right now? Yes. Rose is going to then take the the head and sort of try to reconnect it to the neck as best as possible. Okay. Uh, and kind of use this part of the, the guild hood to kind of form a little makeshift tie between the two. Okay. And it's going to cast Speak With Dead. Oh, okay. Well, it is magic, so you do need to roll out magic, just in case. That's why I roll. incinerates the body. <laughs> Alright. Go ahead and show me the spell. Let's need to double check something. Grant the semblance of life and intelligence to a corpse of your choice within range, long at the answer to the questions you pose. The corpse is still on the mouth and can't be undead. All right. You can begin to ask your questions. It's not moving, it's not setting up, of course, mm -hmm. but the spell seems to go off. All right, first question. Are you the original Hespera? Yes. <clears throat> oh boy, okay, okay. Maybe where's your soul? Mm, I wonder where it is. Yeah, it doesn't return the soul to the body, it just the animated spirit, so. What? Question two. Where did your soul go? Taken, as with all acolytes in the guild. Held for safekeeping, for obedience. That's a legitimate base of people you want to work with. Mm -hmm, right there. Rose, upon hearing this, sort of will take in a breath and there's a kind of almost warm oxygen glow in like their their upper chest as they take it in there. Mm -hmm. It's like, yeah. Mm -hmm. And it's going to take a glance over to Various, seeing if Various is watching this. Various is, is not. Various is looking away and just looks distraught, honestly. Mm -hmm. He can't hear what's going on, though. He's not close enough. Mm -hmm. Alright. Question three. Why did you want your brother dead? Revenge. Have you seen my brother? Ow! Oh, you were muted, I see. No. <laughs> 
Question four, why is Farius here? Ask him. <laughs> oh, there's one more question. Mm hmm. hmm. What? what are the three numbers on the back of your credit card? <laughs> Question five. Did you find Enno, or did Enno find you? Enno did not find me. And with that, the spell wanes. Rose turns back around to look uh, roughly over the various in Luminosa's direction. There's nothing more here. Let's go. Uh, um, someone else be willing to look for personal effects. That's actually what I was about to comment on. Alright, give me an investigation roll. Uh, you don't really find anything of use. At least not to your knowledge. Not she seems pretty empty-handed. Well, not with a nine! Oh, damn. Not with a nine! Yeah, it just sucked her. Oh, it's gone. <laughs> Yes, you found your shoes. Congratulations. She <laughs> seemed to not carry much on her. There is the staff that seems to be held in almost a death thrall in her hands, but that's really about it. No books, no personal effects. Not that you can see. Unless anyone anybody else, else wants to take a look. Yeah, anybody else want to give it a shot? Hell no! Nope. <laughs> Luma sees, sees the same thing. I mean, she's all the way over there with various anyway, so she kind of just looks at it it's like, eh, it's probably nothing. Not very fashionable. Mm -hmm. Guild robes are so out of style. That's why she's dead. I mean... What? <laughs> Are you saying fashion would have saved her? Couldn't have hurt. Ouch. Mm -hmm. Like I said, she chose poorly. Her clothing? Her way of life. Mm -hmm. oh, yeah. There he is. To take a look himself for anything that he recognizes from home. Okay. Go ahead. Oh, of course! Various, it's not so much on her person. When uh, Hespera's head flew, so too did it take something, a personal effect with her. Uh, where the head originally was, in the pool of blood from the head, you see a small silver locket. He's going to pick it up. Okay. And just to hold it. And... All right. Let's let's go back. 
Not gonna look at it or anything? He's not gonna look at it right now. He's not in it. Okay. Alright. You're just gonna leave the staff in her hands? Uh, he'll take it. Okay. Go ahead and put Staff of Frost into Various' inventory. Whoa, or more specifically, that? Hespera's Staff of Frost. Mm-hmm. Yes. Nothing else seems to be around. It's not just you and a lone dead body. A soulless dead body. What do you guys plan to do? I'm waiting for everyone to start leaving. I'm not gonna go alone. That's what they, that's how they get you. Is <laughs> um, everyone done? No burials. No anything. There's not exactly a good place to put her. And it's not right for someone who did the thing she did to be here. Um. I don't know what to do. We can't exactly walk her her body out unless somebody has something to cover her with so the guards don't see those colors. I mean, you could just strip her of her clothing and they wouldn't know. I got it. We'll fit her entirely in the gloves of thievery. God. <laughs> You do have a disposal option right behind you. Yeah, that's what he's thinking. Oh, oh sorry. I agree, dog. Bar, <laughs> bar, bar. Bar, bark, bark, bark. Rose will put a hand on Fairies' shoulder. Oh, and sorry. moving back towards the corpse. will proceed to remove the guild robe. Okay. Underneath, you notice that she's actually wearing a full set of uh, armor. Chainmail, specifically. But she was armored underneath that, so no surprise why she was able to take the hits so well. The armor, however, is familiar to Varius. This was the armor she originally went off to battle with. It still shows wear and tear. Rose. Uh, Sorry, go ahead. Oh. The one part of me says burn the ropes. The pragmatic part says keep them in case we need them. Um... Oh, that makes me feel better about what I was going to do. <sighs> Pay in mind the guild robes are torn and battered. They're not very useful. Okay, yeah. Except no. we have the spell Mend. <laughs> 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 oh, a simple mending spell can't fix! Various. Well, the entire hood did get chopped off. <laughs> you can sew a new one. Okay. Yeah, Wait, sew the head back on, or sew the hood back on? Yes. Yes. <laughs> um, Rose... That was... Oh, sorry. You go ahead. Rose holds the hood out to the... Not the hood, but the robe out to the spiritual weapon still deployed, and is going to let the fiery sword consume it. Okay. And it burns just fine. Bella was going to 
pick up the body and okay. after a moment Darius is gonna look away and Bella is gonna start carrying it towards the the gorge yeah alright is it gonna toss it in yep and with a big hefty heave Bellua tosses the body into the gorge and it vanishes into the deep dark no sound. Nothing. That's the cool. only thing left is a pool of blood on the ground. Let's go. And as you begin to lead the plane up Null, you pass by the guards coming out of the district, but they give you odd glances here and there. One looks like they're about to stop you, but since you're leaving, they assume something's up. <clears throat> and you are now in the central ring of the foundry. <clears throat> Luminosa, where do we need to go? Probably back home. Why did you leave? It's a long story. Don't ever do that again. And she like put her index finger like shaming you like a mother that was a naughty child. Uh-huh. Let's um we needed to go and do things today. We need to <clears throat> to speak with someone, didn't we? And there was something else. Oh, uh, yes, that. Um. Okay, so and she immediately rolls around to Rose. I have some news. Yeah. You may not like it. Oh, here we go. <laughs> but it's happening. We're going to Wonderland. Rose, the moment you hear that, you just have a tick. You know exactly what that is. That is a capital in the Feywild. How you choose to react to it is up to you. <laughs> we go speak with Core. We find Freezer's book. And then we'll deal with that hellscape. <laughs> Why don't I just picture that Rose has like the concerned meme face right now? They they are they are nonplussed. They are nettled. Super nettled. <laughs> Shall I contact Amadeus? Do it. I believe I still have the yes. hockey stone. You do? I do. Mm-hmm. You should utilize the contact on my days? Yeah. All right. What do you wish to say? <laughs> Not that. <laughs> oh. Yeah. Uh, on the days. <laughs> what? what? <laughs> I think she, she thought that that um yeah i keep that, thinking that it's he turns it off but then he doesn't and he keeps it on and it's confusing me oh <laughs> nothing for you to worry yourselves with go ahead continue on it's fine uh if she'll just go amadeus we're all together whenever core's ready and uh you'll get a response saying oh uh fantastic uh if you can can you meet me at uh there's a small little restaurant along the the commerce ring me sticks and uh leo are currently there we were actually not expecting you to call but um head to the uh what's this place called again sticks uh hold on let me go check outside <laughs> and you hear chef blank footsteps for a few moments uh chimera's you see someone breath. walk out of building yeah, you guys actually, uh, give me a perception, actually. Oh, even with my 19? This is, has to be active. Actively uh, okay. 
Yeah, you see someone walk out of a nearby building called the Chimera's Breath. Looks to be a grill restaurant. You all see it. He's kind of holding the sending stone. It looks to be six. It's kind of like, it's like, uh, it's called the Chimera's Breath little grill place. Oh, uh, we see you. We'll be right over. Oh. He kind of will look around before looking in your direction. Oh, shit. Okay, well, come on into our table until I'll head on side. Stone back in bag. She's just going mm-hmm. to start walking, assuming people at least know what that means. So we're walking in bloodied and nah, burnt. Nah, only burnt. <laughs> half, half burnt. I mean, some of us are. But uh, you guys walk into a pretty spacious uh, looking restaurant. It has round tables with uh, grills in the center of them. Kind of like, have you ever been to like a Korean uh, barbecue place? Nope. Yep. So mm-hmm. kind of like that. Uh, like a big old round table with a big grill in the center that people can put their stuff on. But uh, Amadeus, Styx, and uh, Leo are sitting at one in particular one. There's room for all of you to sit because they chose a rather large table. They're a little spaced out, but seeing that you all come in, they kind of scoot closer together on their side. Yes. With Caitlin to go get her car. <clears throat> Don't know. But uh, as you all kind of get to the table and sit on down, uh, there's definitely a look of worry across Amadeus's face as he looks to Varius, to Freus, Rose, Tibbs, and then looks a little surprised at Luminosa. Oh, we're fine. What? We were just out. Doing what? You look like you just went through a tumbler dryer. Family bonding. Dang it, you beat me to it. Oh, dear. Well, I, I guess if it's none of our business, um, I'm guessing you all are ready to see Cole, right? Yes. For the most part. For the mm-hmm. most part. What do you mean? Uh, just personal thing. Don't worry about it. He kind of just stares at you, Frius. Uh, he's going to roll insight versus you. I would not know what that is. Persuasion? Uh, unless you're trying to hide something from him. Persuasion or deception. <laughs> <laughs> you're beat. Meets and beats! Obviously, not everything is all right. What happened? That's very. So what did happen? Well, we need to take care of this first. It's fine. Freyus will look at Amadeus and go. It was Freyus's family member. They are no longer with us in a way we would rather have not met, and I'm just missing a book. So, Uh, honestly, getting along with the day would help uh, probably a majority of us. There's something else, but we can't exactly speak about it here. Let's just say she's no longer getting ahead in life. There's just a look of concern on Avadez's face, but then uh, he looks at you, Freyus. Phrase goes elbows on table and just hit face right in hands at the pun. <laughs> uh, Miss Freyus, you said you were missing your book. Where did you leave it? Opens hands just enough for the mouth to be exposed. I just left it in Greed's casino. It's not too important. Ooh, sorry to hear that. Well... We were just finishing up our meal here. I suppose we can start taking you down. Concerning think... noise about a book, but yes, let's continue. I hear sirens and. Oh, the it's train. a train. <laughs> yeah, it's, it was a train blowing its horn. <clears throat> Sorry. But, uh, no, the three will begin to clean up. They were, they look, from the look of it, they were doing some after dinner, uh, after food drinks. Uh, definitely an odd choice for breakfast, but who's, who's judging there? But uh, the three of them will get up, and uh, Amadeus will mostly lead the pack to lead out of the restaurant. Hopefully you guys follow. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And uh, 
they'll take you along a different route this time. Instead of heading into the council chamber area, which is currently very packed, lots of guards all over the place, a lot of noise coming from there. Uh, they'll actually begin to go kind of along the commerce ring until they reach what looks to be an area between earth and water. But they're not going to either of those districts. Instead, they'll ha- kind of head to the small little building that kind of seems more like a guard outpost. No one's really there. It looks like a place where, you know, when you see those places that will usually have those mysterious doors that usually say employees only, you don't really see anyone go in or out of there. Kind of yeah. one of those kind of little doors. And uh, I'm going to will come up to it, kind of pull the handle and open the door. Kind of motion for you all to go on in. It's very dark in there. Can't see. I have dark vision. Done work. Damn. Y'all head inside? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yep. Yes. Okay. And very much similar to your first experience, although it seems incredibly dark and almost endless the more you walk, eventually you begin to see bright blue lights on ahead of you as it begins to illuminate your path. Behind you, bringing up the rear is, of course, the three entities, uh, Amadeus, Styx, and, of course, Leo. They haven't said much for this point, but instead they begin to lead you toward the door itself. Once they reach the door, Amadeus heads up to the keypad, will type several numbers, wait, type several more before the door once again lets out a loud hiss and begins to Any possible way to see those numbers? No. Damn. But the door lets out a loud hiss as it rises up, allowing you into the innermost antechamber. Much as before, nothing has changed. It seems to be an almost endless expanse room with large, very straight, almost perfect pillars with strange panel lines running across each and every one of them. The only source of light being a small dip or kind of a hole in the ground that is led to by rather shallow stairs into a room that has several strange consoles, stuffed animals, and the like, as well as a pool of water in the very center that looks to be act- looks and acts more like a table. And, like before, the entity that you know as Core is sitting and waiting for you, but not waiting at the table. They seem to be on what looks to be a bed-like structure, uh, reading a picture book. <clears throat> they do notice you're there. In fact, they'll even look up for a brief moment before looking down at the book, turning a page. There's seating. Yes, there's plenty of seats all over the place. Take and seat. It. Anyone want to do anything? In fact, there's a lot of silence between you all right now. Lead on this one. I mean, they're reading, so don't want to interrupt. Oh, they've looked up. They've noticed you. They've acknowledged you. Oh. Rose will take a seat as well. Okay. And as you all take seats, uh, Cor will slowly close the book and then set it to the side before kind of pulling their legs up onto the bed, sitting a little cross-legged and looking out at all of you. So, have you made your decision? I believe we've come to a vote. And what is that vote? Unless Flix decided to change their mind in their new body. Uh, Last I remember, the majority was for you. I'm sorry about what happened. But there was a little more I could do in that case. My protectors tend to act on their own volition. Don't 
see them as evil for that, I'm afraid. It's murderous. It's okay. We understand. It's difficult to understand. They each have their own motivations, their own emotions and feelings. Madarak doesn't act as he does without reason. His burning hatred for outsiders came with a reason. Something that hasn't abated in the many eons he's been alive. Which is? He lost someone to them. Someone dear. Someone that can't be replaced. Was that because of his own failing? No. It was something he couldn't stop. Something none of us could stop. It doesn't give anyone a right to inflict pain on others for the pain they've gone through. He'll slowly look at you, Various. It's not a lesson I've learned quickly, but it's one I'm slowly learning. That may be the case. But you also have to remember some people do things because they care. Some people, but that still doesn't give him a right to murder people. Nor did it give him a right to the sister. I saw what happened. We're not talking about that. (sighs) Corey's gone very quiet. Various is just looking away. Well, this is awkward. Anyways, as Prius was alluding to previously, we managed to reach the decision between us that out of the possibilities handed over to us you and your walk core may be the the best of those options in the end it is your choice but I am thankful you chose us I'm sure that Anyone else would have said the same thing, but hopefully with our help and your help, we're able to fix the current problems. Oh, for that, we kind of have to make a little pit stop in Wonderland to deal with um, an immediate Fey problem. I bet I did eavesdrop a little bit on that. I did hear about that from Leonard. Of course you did. Yeah, they've kind of gone crazier than normal. Well... And they're worried about them getting out. Oh, I suppose that's something about the Fae, is that there really is no limit to how crazy they can be. At least as far as I'm aware. Mm Mm-hmm. But, as of right now, Kor seems to look down before looking up, almost as if searching, or looking through the air. They're still in captivity, at least at present. Yeah, and um, they find a way to break those iron chains. I wouldn't be surprised. They've done it before. Yeah, that's why we have to go to Wonderland ASAP Mm. to get rid of that problem. Mm. I know that you could probably talk to Auntie. She can take you there directly. She has a lot of different portals all over the place. But you'd have to get to her tavern first. And that's currently, well. But Auntie's not in her tavern. She's in the palace with Leonard. Yes. But she can't access her gateways unless she can get to her tavern. Oh. Well, we can cut our way through that. I'm sure you can. You seem to do a really good job cutting earlier. Mm-hmm. Well, I've got to consider that. Mean, not wrong. Nope, not wrong. <laughs> We've literally got a living Molotov cocktail. Yeah, you do. <laughs> Just shake Rose up enough. Just what is he? A carbonated soda? They. Sorry. <laughs> 
<laughs> just get there's fairies. Ah! Look, I, I'm just yes. look, I'm just saying there's a lot of problems you can solve with a 64 ounce of fireball. But oh no, Auntie, maybe if you provide your case to her, you'd be able to help her out. It's usually good to be on her good side. And Why she don't does. Just have Leonard burn down the hedge area to make a way to the castle. Wouldn't uh, to the tavern? Wouldn't that be easier? He's a it... lord of fire. He should be able to control fire. Yes, but the underworks are controlled by the Fae. So unless he gets a go ahead from Auntie, he can't do anything. You don't think be... he'll give him a go ahead to get to his tavern? Be surprised. Auntie is a strange thing. She operates very bizarrely. If anything, I wouldn't be surprised if she's trying to ask for someone to do it for her in exchange for something. That's probably why Leonard's researching it for you. Wouldn't surprise me. That doesn't make any sense. Just burn down the hedges and get to your portal and your tavern back. He might Waiting also around burn... is just bad for business. You lose customers that way. He might, he might burn, burn the building. Oh, beat me to it. He might well, what kind of fire lord can't control a stream of fire? Oh, Besides that's... the fossil pirate one. That's the thing about fire, is that it's both an element that can give warmth and life, but at the same time, it is volatile and destructive. Regardless of how much control you think you may have, in the end, it will always rage out of control if you fan the flames too much. So they and Cora's eyes will actually slowly off. pan to Rose. I feel like there's a point to your previous statement. There is. I'm aware of the current problems you've been having with your emotions and your memories, Rose. Also, it seems that someone's trying to reach out to you. But I wonder if you're going to be able to take it or not. That's really reassuring. <laughs> Rose stares at Core for a moment and then will straighten up in her chair. Do you remember yet? I remember portions. I can't always give you back everything. To give you all your memories would cause you actual pain and may destabilize you. But I can answer questions to help you discover them quicker. Well, I guess since today's already in such a Q&A mood. You, um... I saw myself very recently, not as I was now, but as a guild member. Mm -hmm. I saw myself in the same robes that Hesper was wearing. That was how you were when you first came here. Wow, and you judged me. But, considering your circumstances, you weren't able to survive. Not long, at least. Wait, what do you mean when I first came here? Do you not remember how you died? Rose takes in a somewhat unsteady breath. There's little 
little flickers under um under their uh under the throat. Mm-hmm. I do recall probably was scarred into my dream memories. Mm -hmm. I was I was cast down here by the Fae. Yes. Do you remember the face of the Fae that cast you down? I feel like I should. What color do you remember? I I saw blue. Mm -hmm. Indeed, you did. But when you were cast here, they threw you here. They had a means to access this place. But as you fell, heat was too much for you and you perished before you even hit the ground. It was then that I stepped in. I sometimes have the strength to do that with some people, some primordials. Which is what I did for you. While most would have had to tangle with their inner madness due to the fact that my forges are not currently lit. I was able to at least form you safely within the main city of fire under Leonard's care. I'm glad to see that you found others to be with. But at the same time, I'd recommend following with Luminosa's path. You may seek reconciliation or even revenge for your death, so long as you follow with them. Like the revenge part. After all, when people are in the throes of madness, they don't care who they hurt, but they always regret it. Even deep down. Get your and there's a cow on the counter. <laughs> <laughs> I was. Oh, excuse me. <laughs> that was my brother. That was my brother. <laughs> Sorry about that. Didn't that expect that. That was. <laughs> There's probably a cat on the counter. Being a pet owner. Fantastic mm timing. -hmm. Just put some aluminum foil on top of the counter. Never do it again. <laughs> oh, that's perfect. Mm -hmm. But as Cora is talking to you, Rose, uh, everyone else, you knows that. Uh, uh, Styx and Leo seem to be getting something together. They look to be charm bracelets, one for each of you. Whatever it is, it seems to be that they're getting these together for to show your allegiance to Kor, with while being kind of you know subtle. We're going to have to wear those. Oh, just put it on your foot. You'll be able to see it that way. I still feel it. That feels like a you problem. Cor will continue looking at you, though, Rose. What? <laughs> okay. Wait, what's missing? Hmm? Uh, when we feed them wet canned food, we usually keep it in the sink as we wash it out. And it sounds like one of them went missing, so it sounds like one of the cats grabbed it and ran off with it. Well, oh, no. Okay. Alright. Uh, do we want to take our quick 15 minute break here? We'll continue at the top of the yeah. hour. Yep. Gonna track right. down the, the missing yes. can. Yes. <laughs> Be right back. All right, you little. Let's find out where you put that food before it starts stinking up the joint. Mm -hmm. 